and welcome to worship at Plymouth Methodist Central Hall. We're thrilled that you're able to join us online today. If you don't know me, my name's Johnny. I'm the lay pastor 
at uh, the church here and it's my uh, privilege to welcome you to worship today. There will be people gathering in the church as you watch this, if you're watching line, if you're watching later, um, it's great to have you with us. I'm recording this a few days um, earlier in the week. Um, I'm currently in one of my uh, most favorite places. I just left the church office uh, about 10 minutes ago and wandered up to the seafront here in Plymouth. Um, Gareth mentioned last week in his sermon that he loves to swim. Uh, we swim together. Uh, we try to do that once a week. This is the spot that we come to swim. You'll see Drake's Island uh, behind me. Um, it's just a beautiful um, part of the world that we live in, isn't it? And uh, I'd encourage you, um, get up here. Um, you can meet with God here as much as you can meet with him in a church building. So um, yeah, I just encourage you to come up and just uh, enjoy. Um, the the city that we have. Gareth talked last week and on the start of James 1 as he began our series on the letter of James and there's a, a verse in the start of that chapter that talks about sometimes in our life as Christians we can be kind of blown around and tossed on the waves of the sea. Um, today's a really uh, calm day actually so uh, it wouldn't be, it's not too stormy today but um, yeah, I just hope that you enjoy this uh, series as we go through James. Gareth will be continuing to preach on that today, finishing off um, chapter one. We've got Ellis leading our worship today. He's put together a band of um, great people today to help lead our worship. We, we trust and uh, hope that you'll be blessed by both the worship today and by the uh, teaching from God's word. And just a couple of notices to add to those that you may have already seen um, on this uh, live feed, on the slides that uh, Nick will have put together. I'm um, just letting you know the next Sunday, we meet in the evening for a service of recognition to celebrate the accreditation of Paul Wittal and Paul Courtney as local preachers. And um, Reverend Alistair Bolt is coming to preach to us, so it'll be great. And um, that service won't be live streamed, but if you're able to come along and uh, offer your support to uh, Paul and Paul, uh, that would be great. It will be 7 o'clock next Sunday. We'll meet tonight at 7 o'clock as well. Um, Gareth will be preaching uh, this evening as well, and you'll be more than welcome at that too. Just one further thing to, to add to the notices. We will soon be beginning um, kind of pastoral clinics um, in the church once a week. That will be headed up by Dave Martin and Judith Walker. Gareth will be involved in that as well. So look out for some more information on uh, when that will be uh, starting and how you can engage with that if you feel that that would be something that you may uh, benefit from. And so we're going to begin our worship now in just a few moments and uh, uh, you'll be kind of linked into the, to the live activity at Central Hall if you're watching us uh, live on Sunday morning um, or if you're watching later. Um, it's great that you're able to join with us. Uh, we're so grateful that we've got this technology to enable those that can't for whatever reason um, be in the building to be able to join us for worship and we trust that you'll be blessed by the worship today and we, uh, we pray that we would in all that we do glorify Christ and we know don't we that if we glorify Christ then that's for our good too um, so be blessed and be a blessing to those around you and uh, hope to see you again soon bye bye everybody welcome to worship uh, it's lovely to see you here and uh, uh, welcome to everyone online as well um, we are gonna start worshiping this morning uh, with a song called come now is the time to worship so please be upstanding if you're able and uh, we'll we'll give it some welly and we'll we'll start worshiping the Lord thank you Now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just. 
just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come, one day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose the time to worship come now is the time to give your heart come just as you are to worship come just as you are before
chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I'm a child. salvation his empire shall bring joy to all nations when jesus is king come let us sing praise to our king jesus our king jesus our king this is our song who to jesus belong glory to shall dwell in his marvelous light races long severed his love shall unite justice and truth from his scepter shall spring wrong shall be ended when jesus is king come let us sing praise to our king jesus our king jesus our king this is our song who to jesus belongs Glory to Jesus, to Jesus our King. All shall be well in his kingdom of peace. Freedom shall flourish and wisdom increase. Foe shall be friend when his triumph we sing. Sword shall be sickle when Jesus is King. Come let us sing. Praise to our King, Jesus our King, Jesus our King. This is our song, who to Jesus belong. Glory to Jesus, to Jesus our King. Soul shall be saved from the burden of sin. Doubt shall not darken his witness within. Hath no terrors and death hath no sting. Love is victorious when Jesus is King. Come, let us sing praise to our King, Jesus our King, Jesus our King. This is our song, who to Jesus belong. Glory to Jesus, to Jesus our King. Kingdom of Christ, for thy coming we pray. Hasten, O Father, the dawn of the day. When this new song thy creation shall sing, 
Satan is vanquished when Jesus is King. Come, let us sing praise to our King. Jesus our King, Jesus our King. This is our song who to Jesus belong. Glory to Jesus, to Jesus our King. La, la, la. Well, do please grab a seat. That was a golden oldie, wasn't it? Goodness me. Uh, wonderful. Well, it's great words and uh, uh, great to sing uh, the, uh, the truth of those uh, words again uh, today as we bless the Lord uh, with uh, worship from our heart, mind and lips. A very, very good morning to each and every one of you um, and a very warm welcome to you to Central Hall this morning, whether you're here in the building worshipping with us or whether you're watching online, you are very, very very welcome and it is great to have you with us. Uh, my name is Gareth, I'm the lead minister here, if you didn't know that already. And uh, the musicians uh, were Ellis, or are rather, Ellis who was uh, leading us on guitar. And uh, Then we had uh, Becky, one of our new students, or, or she is, sorry, a student, um, uh, on p uh, piano keyboard. Uh, we had Nigel playing his single one note every song on bass. And, um, and then we had uh, Ziggy, who's another student uh, on drums. Oh, there you are, Ziggy. There we are. So, uh, 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 so we've got a, a wonderful group of people uh, leading us the, this morning. Um, just a word of introduction. If you're a, a regular attender here at our building, you'll be thinking, this is a bit empty for uh, this time in the morning. And it isn't because people are still having their cup of coffee and haven't worked out that they're coming in. But our children today are, um, and young people are having their own kind of church, really. Uh, and so they're not coming in to join us at any stage. But if you hang around for coffee after the service, you'll see that there's another 50 or 60 individuals that are running wild in the Dave Martin Memorial Hall uh, over there and uh, they're having kind of worship and teaching as a whole group of children this morning um, and that is why they're not in with us so it, um, that's a great new initiative um, and uh, we hope and pray don't we that that goes well and is enriching for all uh, children and anybody else that's helping. Um, the second thing to say today is that we are um, taking photos for our publicity material. If for any reason whatsoever, and we will not ask any questions, you do not wish to have your uh, person included in any photos, please would you tell me or uh, Johnny Libby, who's the one walking around with an England uh, cricket top, he's also got a blue badge like this, and tell us before you leave today, and we will ensure that any photos uh, in which you are included are deleted uh, before any device leaves these premises, okay? So there's a whole host of reasons why various people may not want to be in photos, and if that is the case for you, please tell us, and we will make sure that no images of you are included. And then um, the next thing to say is, I hope today as you came into church, whether you are a regular attender here or whether you're new to the life of the fellowship, that you received a warm and hearty welcome. If you didn't, then I hope and pray that as you leave, you'll receive a warm and hearty and friendly goodbye. Um, we are aware that our welcome team, as we emerge from the pandemic, is uh, relatively stretched and at the minute, we're kind of relying on a same handful of people uh, to help us turn up early and open the door and say hello uh, to new folk. If you would be interested in either at our morning or our evening services, helping us give a warm welcome to um, uh, anybody that uh, comes to our church on a Sunday, uh, we're going to offer you a free lunch next Sunday morning. Um, yeah, indeed. Soup and a roll in the Discovery Cafe. You may even get a bit of cake if I can uh, persuade Evie. Uh, and if you would be willing or uh, like to help on an occasional basis 
We're not going to try and trap you with a soup and a roll and say, right, you're on the road to between now and Christmas every week. But if you would, on an occasional basis, be willing to help us either with the serving of refreshments or the welcoming of people on the door, uh, we would uh, love you to come and join us for lunch as we explain briefly next Sunday uh, what we think that's going to look like uh, going forward. Some of you will have received a letter. Some of you will have seen the midweek message that highlights this, inviting everybody. This is your personal invite now. All right? So nobody can say to me, I didn't get an invite. I didn't know I was allowed to come. Well, I'm telling you, you are welcome. If you've got uh, enthusiastic about making people feel welcome in the house of the Lord, we would love you to join us for lunch next Sunday. We're going to pray together, and then we're going to sing a little bit more, and then we're going to pray a bit more. So it's a bit of a, a prayer uh, song sandwich uh, today, but that's no bad thing. Let's pray together. So we've sung in those uh, songs earlier on, loving and gracious God, about your kingship, about your majesty, and about your love for each and every one of us, that you would call us your children. We thank you and we praise you, loving and gracious God, that though we call you king, and that is what you are, you are not distant and remote, stuck behind reams of barriers or protocols or security personnel, not in some remote throne room. But you are the king who has come to us, the king who has humbled himself and become just as we are, a human being. A king who in his selfless dying on a cross, in his glorious resurrection, has opened the way for us to have access to him. Oh, what a king you are, Lord. Merciful and great slow to anger, abounding in love, father to the fatherless, the one who shelters us like a mother hen shelters her chicks. Oh, what a king you are. And we bless your wonderful and lovely name. Lord, we recognize that so often we do not live like subjects of the king. So often that uh, connection between hearing your word and then living it out and reflecting it to others is somehow broken. Forgive us when our living doesn't match up our speaking and our thinking. Forgive us when our thinking doesn't match up with our singing. Forgive us when our living doesn't match up with our believing. And as we make our confession of sin today, O oh merciful King, though we bow in humility and in offering of ourselves again in penitence, you do not dismiss us as if you are sat on some lofty throne, but because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, you welcome us home with words of reassurance. Your sins are forgiven. Oh, what a king you are, great in mercy, great in wisdom. How we bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing again together, so why don't you uh, stand if you're able to do so, and uh, our musicians will lead us in a couple of songs of worship.
It's falling from the clouds A strange and lovely sound I hear it in the thunder and the rain It's ringing in the skies Like cannons in the night The music of the universe plays We're singing you are holy Great and mighty, the moon and the stars declare who you are. I'm so unworthy, but still you love me forever. My heart will sing of how great you are. song of galaxies it's reaching far beyond the milky way let's join in with the sound come on let's sing it out as the music of the universe plays we're singing you are holy great and mighty the moon and the stars declare who you are i'm so unworthy but still you love me forever my heart will sing of how great all glory honor power is yours amen all glory honor power is yours amen all glory honor power is yours forever amen we're singing you are holy great and mighty the moon and the stars declare who you are i'm so unworthy but still you love me Forever my heart will sing of how great we're singing. You are holy, great and mighty. The moon and the stars declare who you are. I'm so unworthy, but still you love me. Forever my heart will sing of how great you are. to the cross where we first met 
draw me to my knees so we can talk. Let me feel your breath. Let me know you're here with me. Let's continue at that. Uh, meeting place of heaven and earth as we pray for ourselves and for the world in which we live. Just a number of different topics that are on our hearts and minds and it's uh, homelessness Sunday uh, today and so we uh, are mindful of those who sleep tonight with no shelter. We're in the middle of mental health awareness uh, week and so that will uh, touch many of us in lots of different ways. Uh, received news this week that uh, David Beverly has died, known to many here. So we are praying for Kay and his sons. And again, Gwyneth Ashton, known to many, is at the very end of her life. And so again, we're holding her and those that love her very much in the presence of God. And so, Father, we come at your invitation with these and so many other things swirling around our head and heart. Continue to hold before you, Lord, those who do not have a house or a warm place to lay their head. We encounter so many folk in and around this building day by day and week by week. And uh, some people we know are trying it on and trying to put on our heartstrings and others we know are in desperate need. We pray the prayer for World Homeless Day today. God of mercy, we hear the persistent call to feed the hungry and find shelter for the homeless. Stir our hearts to move deeply in our walk with Jesus. Help us answer the question, why do we feel comfortable living beyond our needs when others do not have their basic needs met? Help us not be hypocrites of lip service, but disciples of action. Keep our hearts soft enough to keep hearing the cry of the hungry and the homeless. Pray, Lord, that in this whole area of responding to great need, that you would give us great wisdom. We pray for ministries of this church and other churches at places like Shekinah and the Harbour Centre and the, uh, the Soup Run who are reaching out to homeless people day uh, by day in this city. Would you bless them? Would you give those leaders of ministry great wisdom? And would you, as we've prayed, move our hearts, Lord, that we would never be complacent or settled with systemic injustice 
as it permeates through our economy. We bring before you, Lord, those whom are affected by the whole issue of mental ill health. We know that that will touch a nerve for many people watching this or sat here in this room. We lift before you people whom we love that are suffering so much because of poor mental well-being. We seek your healing and wholeness for them. We bring before you our own struggles, loving God. Thanking you that you know us better than we even know ourselves. That you do not wait for us to be perfect before coming to you, but as we've sung uh, already this morning, you are a God who invites us to come just as we are. Lord, meet us in our need, meet us in our wholeness, meet us in our brokenness. Give us wisdom to care for ourselves well. To be honest with our struggles, to celebrate our joys, and to receive your help in our weakness. Pray particularly for those that we know about and care for at this time. We think of uh, the Beverly family. Uphold them, Lord, in their grief. We thank you for a swift and merciful end uh, to David's life without more suffering. But we ask for comfort for his loved ones, for Kay and the sons. And for Gwyneth, would you, Lord, presence yourself so close to her with a peace that passes comprehension that she would know herself to be held in the beloved hands of Christ as she comes to approach the heavenly gates. And in the quietness of God's presence, we lift before him and to him other people, places that need his help. Merciful God, accept these prayers as we offer them in faith through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to say. The words are on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Before we sing uh, another hymn, uh, we're going to hear the reading of God's word this morning, which Laura is going to bring for us.
This morning's reading is taken from James, chapter 1, verses 19 to 27. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteousness, the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word God planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like the man who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looked like what he looks like but the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this not forgetting what he has heard but doing it he will be blessed in what he does if anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after the orphans and the widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Amen. Sing, uh, Holy Spirit, living breath of God. Holy Spirit, living breath of God, breathe new life into my willing soul. Bring the presence of the risen Lord to renew my heart and make me whole. Cause your word to come alive in me. Give me faith for what I cannot see. Give me passion for your purity. Holy Spirit, breathe you life in me. Holy Spirit, come abide within. Make your joy be seen in all I do. Love enough to cover every sin in each thought and deed and attitude. Kindness to the greatest and the Gentleness that sows the path of peace. Turn my striving into works of grace. Breath of God, show Christ in all I do. Holy Spirit, from creation's birth, giving life to all that God has made. Show your power again on earth cause your church to hunger for your ways let the fragrance of our prayers arise lead us on the road of sacrifice that in unity the face of Christ will be clear for all the world to see Father, we thank you for your written word. 
and we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon it and upon us that we might see and hear and encounter your living word even our Saviour Christ for his name sake we pray Amen uh, Folks I have a problem and it's one that most of you uh, will know about already um, in that I speak too much and listen too little. Some of you are saying, yeah, look at the preaching rotor. He certainly does speak too much, doesn't he? But, um, but I do. I failed as yet to absorb the lesson that most of us were taught at primary school, that we have one of these and two of these, and we should uh, think that that gives uh, a good pattern and model uh, for living and acting. Uh, but of course, I'm an external processor, if you understand what that means. So uh, I think as I speak. Um, and what that, that means for me is that most of the time, I am first having a thought as I hear it out of my mouth. Now, some of you will uh, relate to this. You're like, yeah, of course. That, isn't that how everyone works? <laughs> And the answer is no, because about half of you in the congregation, um, or actually uh, studies show about two-thirds actually amongst the Christian congregation uh, and amongst leaders as well, are very different. Um, you will, some of you, carefully consider and reflect uh, upon a word or a sentence or a thought only offering an opinion once you have thoroughly considered and thought it through. Uh, for me, of course, it's two sides of a coin, I think, and therefore speak very quickly. So in group discussions, um, I've often got to the conclusion before a lot of people have even ever considered the question. And now some say to me, Gareth, you're brilliant, you're so quick thinking. That is a huge strength. But of course, the downsides, as you could well understand, are that there are rarely many filters. Gets me into trouble, as you have seen from this pulpit. And also, people who are more introverted than I am don't understand or appreciate that every word I utter hasn't been deeply considered for many moments. And so I have been before in meetings where I'll start off the meeting saying, I think we should do this, and by the end of it say, we should definitely do that. And like, uh, some people think, what? How can this possibly be? But I'm just working out the processing of it in conversation. Anybody relate at all? Yeah, about four of you in the room. That's why we're so misunderstood. <laughs> So then when I hear the Apostle James, we're in a series in James which began last week, this is our second week in it, the Apostle James says, be quick to hear and slow to speak, I kind of think to myself, I'm the wrong person to be stood here giving this message because it proves just a little bit challenging. Now, the context uh, uh, that James is speaking in is the wisdom literature of the Jewish tradition. And uh, James knows about that. He's absorbed that. That is, uh, you know, seeps through his uh, entire being and informs how he thinks and writes. And in many ways, the letter of James is the New Testament equivalent to books of the Old Testament like Ecclesiastes or Proverbs, which is just a collection in many ways of uh, someone uh, pouring out their unconscious thoughts. Oh, yeah. And... That tradition, that, that Jewish wisdom tradition, prized careful 
and considered speech. You read it in the Proverbs time and time again about having a guard on one's mouth, about being um, uh, uh, quick to think and slow to speak. All of those kind of emphasis, time and time again, are through the wisdom literature, the Proverbs of the Old Testament. And so James has absorbed this, and he knows that studious and careful listening is what is valued really highly. So no wonder then he warns against careless words. But of course, you'll notice, if you heard or are reading the passage, that what he really wants to address is not kind of ideas just uh, spoken out willy-nilly um, or in haste. He's actually wanting to uh, challenge those people that express their irritation, their rage, their anger without any sort of safeguard there to process it. In other words, he's saying, don't speak so quickly in, in anger that you go on to regret what you have said and have to repair the deep damage that unfettered outbursts of rage will do. Now, it seems that in the congregation James is writing to that some people were justifying their anger uh, by suggesting that it was righteous. It's an expression of justice. Well, David Nystrom, a commentator on James, is clear, um, or rather understands that James is clear, that righteous action never springs from anger. Righteous action never springs from anger. And so the antidote to, uh, to careless talk, you remember the old, um, oh, I don't remember them because I'm far too young, but you know, most of you will remember during the war, you know, the posters that said, uh, yeah, look at you, Nicky Donovan, particularly, um, careless talk costs lives, or at least you might have seen those posters in history museums or in history books, all right, careless talk costs lives. So James is kind of wanting to tune into that and saying, actually, um, we need to be careful how we speak. If we're careless with it, it will do unfettered damage. And we know, don't we, time and time again, there's that ridiculous uh, uh, saying of, um, of school playgrounds up and down the nation, sticks and stones will break my bones and words could never hurt me. What an absolute load of tosh. How many people will quickly put a bandage or quickly recover from a physical bruise, but 30, 40, 50, 60 years later, live under the torment of words spoken in scorn. Or maybe even just through carelessness. And the antidote then, says James, is a, a humble listening to the word of God. Now, he says humble listening. Remember, this was, a, was not a, a letter that people would read together in a community, but rather the letter would arrive and a messenger uh, would read out the letter of James to the community that were assembled. And so they would hear the word of God quite literally uh, in that community. That was the only means by which it could be received. And so James says, when you hear the word of God read aloud in your church, humble yourself then, all of you. In other words, adopt a teachable spirit. Adopt a mindset that says, my thoughts, my attitudes, my values, my entire being needs to be shaped by the word of God. So in other words, we, we kind of let the Bible read us. We let the Bible speak to us and inform how we view the world and how we live our lives in the world. Now, of course, I've said this again in a whole other different context. The, the reality has become for us that we are so distracted by all sorts of narratives all over the place 
And most of them, we don't even, we're not even aware of. In the olden days, when we used to watch adverts on TV, before you paused them and fast-forwarded through them, we were, we were bombarded with messages, subliminal messages that said, you need this. You know, in, in generations past, it may have been, you can't be a good housewife unless you really use Silit Bang or whatever it might have been. Or respectable families only drink Kenko coffee. Or, you know, whatever. You can replace the different things. Or if you really want to live well on a budget, then of course you'll shop at X supermarket. And all the time we're getting these narratives that are coming in. We see them more than we could realize on magazines, on uh, ads on the internet, uh, TV uh, programs, even, you know, brilliant things that, that we might be in awe at the art and drama and cultural content of it. So much of our um, society is shoving a whole different story at us. And James is uh, saying, I think, out, out of, well, the Holy Spirit is saying out of the words of James to us nearly 2,000 years later, folks... Be careful, be careful, guard your heart, guard your mind, and allow your worldview to be shaped by the truths of Scripture. Do not, do not let your view of Scripture be shaped by the worldview. Now, he's not calling for some aesthetic uh, sort of absence from engagement for the world. But it's a completely different way around because the way of salvation for James is found in humbly receiving the word of truth. In his context, listening to God's word. In our context, reading. Uh, maybe listening to it on a podcast. Maybe painting it or doodling it out if you're one of those arty people that likes drawing stuff everywhere. Token nod to you, Jane Martin. Salvation for James is found in a humble reception of the word of truth, saying we need this instruction and it shapes who we are. But just humbly listening to this is not enough. Um, James says, once you have heard, um, you must uh, live out. Don't just listen to the word, do what it says. We are responsible for acting upon it. Um, are there any of you that uh, linger long at the mirror? No, I'm not surprised really by the look. Anyway, I'm... Um, I don't know whether you do or not. I don't. It's just, I, I, you know, I'm not somebody that uh, um, spends hours doing my hair before church on a Sunday. You know, and, uh, we're beginning to kind of see this kind of emerge in our family. We've got, you know, preteens just beginning to see the more hair gel being put in on a Sunday morning. And particularly if certain girls are in the Sunday school group that week and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, it's just not my bag at all. And I don't come from a family that took hours in the bathroom styling and uh, setting themselves perfectly for the rest of the day. Well, James goes on to talk about, you know, people that sit in front of a mirror. And he, he compares uh, that practice uh, to those that hear the word of God and, and uh, don't live it out. Now, there weren't many mirrors in the first century, okay? So James is writing. He's not thinking, okay, well, they can just hop off to Ikea and buy the little swirly mirror or the nice one or whatever it is. Um, uh, there weren't many mirrors at all, and those that they had weren't any good. Um, and so the reality, this is really hard for us to, to, to really get, uh, sort of absorb, the reality was that because you didn't look at a mirror very often, and because the quality of the mirror you had wasn't great, you oft and there was no photographs, you often, in, if you were living in the first century, had very little understanding of what you looked like. Now, 
we see ourselves all over the place, don't we? On mirrors, on our driving licence ID, our passport photos, on CCTV when we walk in shops. So actually, if we see our picture on Crime Watch, Most Wanted, whatever, we all see ourselves and go, ooh, that's me. We know what we look like. Um, but in the first century, you didn't know what you looked like. So James is saying, those people that hear the word of God and don't do it, are like those people that look at the mirror and then they forget what they look like again. They forget all about it. They, 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 they don't see the implications uh, of what they have heard. And so the proof that they really had heard the message of God's word was when it was lived out in their eyes, uh, lives, sorry, or whether it was put, uh, and when it was put into action. So the proof that you had really humbly received the word of salvation and it was shaping your life was when people saw a difference in how you acted. Now, that's actually no different uh, today. No different today. But the point is this, that hearing is not enough. I used to be minister of a church where it, you could be forgiven for thinking what mattered the most was having a correct doctrinal understanding of various things. And I used to find that people would be arguing over the right belief of so-and-so, but so often blind to how that was reflected in their conduct. These were earnest people of great integrity who were conscious to do the right thing by the Lord. But there was so much focus on making sure they'd heard correctly that there was very little effect in how they lived correctly and how they related to one another, both in and outside of the church. So the proof of this church here that they'd really heard the message of God's word was that it was lived out in their lives. And the context for all of that, and the context for us, of course, is the whole of our lives. Where do you spend the most of amount of time? It's your home, it's your work, it's amongst your neighbours, your friends, your family. So the emphasis is really clear here. James is saying that wherever we find ourselves, our, out of our life should flow the principles of the word of God that we have heard. So that should permeate our entire belief system. So grace and kindness and forgiveness and mercy and righteousness and truthfulness and honour should flow out of everything we do, even what we say and what we speak. It should become more and more the internal filter. So as Jesus says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, the point then of listening in here is that it forms and propels us to live out there, although I hate those false boundaries, although you illustrate, you understand why I'm putting it like that. And I'm not sure that we've done a great job of that, me included. I'm not sure over the 20 odd years that I've been doing a job like this that I have well equipped the people under my influence, to live well Monday to Saturday uh, in the arena that they find themselves. I hope I've done some good, but I'm not convinced that the church has done a great job about this. Oh, often we're speaking a different language and so concerned about internal matters that we're not resourcing each other as to how to live for Jesus, humbly informed by his word, Monday to Saturday. So the point of what we do here uh, has got to make an impact there. And that is the, the context of James. It's all of life. That's what it's about. But we can uh, start here. Mike Pilavacci used to say, um, if we get it right in the meeting place, we'll get it right in the marketplace. Get it right in the meeting place 
to get it right in the marketplace. So if we are going to talk about kind of internal stuff, then this is the practice ground for living well so that we're in, in a big bad world and we're in a, 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 you know, an environment that is perhaps not as sympathetic as here to the claims of God's word, we're empowered and equipped and encouraged to do so faithfully. So it's about out there, but it may start here too. And, and putting God's word into action uh, has got to be a lived reality within our community as well. I want to spend just one minute on this and give one example how we can be doers of the word. Those of you that were here last Sunday night uh, heard me undertake to say this uh, this morning here, and so I will do. What we've kind of ended up as we come out of the, uh, the COVID time is by hook or by crook, we've ended up with... Um, two rather distinct congregations. That's a big brushstroke, big generalization, but on the whole, that's kind of what we've uh, ended up with. And we've got a, you know, a style in the morning, which is deliberately trying to reach out to those that aren't yet part of our fellowship, uh, trying to be sort of seeker friendly, try to, uh, I hope I'm doing this now, trying to explain God's word in simple, understandable terms. That is the aim. It's always been the aim since before I arrived, it's continued to be the aim. No radical change. It just is what we're trying to do. Trying to help people understand more and more of, of God's word. And then on a Sunday night, it's a bit quieter. It's a bit more structured. And we're trying there uh, to uh, help mature Christians live out their faith uh, and equip them uh, to, to do so. And, um, and so we've ended up with these kind of two congregations uh, of, often and uh, I want to set a challenge to, to some of you. And that is um, that often people find themselves in those congregations largely because of style of worship. That's the honest truth of it. People that come in the night don't come in the morning because they you know, want to be able to not have their hearing aids blown off by the music. No comment on this morning's, by the way, at all. I'm a big silly, but that's kind of, it's about style of worship, largely. In the evenings, we've got an organist. We don't have one available very often in the morning, so we get more organ, and it's a different kind of vibe. So people have largely identified around preference. That's fine. No problem with that at all. The challenge I've set to our Sunday evening congregation last week, and I set it to you this morning, is could it be that one of the arenas for putting the word of God into action is actually about serving in one of the other congregations where your preferences won't get met, but that it might have a benefit for somebody else. So, you know, you know you've heard me say, we're struggling to serve coffee, we're struggling to serve welcome. The people that are doing it, doing it really well, um, but we've got four or five people going around on a rotation, and soon they're going to get tired. We need some more help. And I could make that case for all sorts of ministries in the life of the church, the children's work, our team at Oasis, the volunteers in the Discovery Cafe, and on and on and on and on. So, you know, thinking particularly around a Sunday morning for now, one little illustration. Could you, people that perhaps prefer to attend in the morning because it's more convenient or you don't mind your eardrums being blasted out by the music, whatever, could you every now and again come of an evening, knowing that you probably won't like it as much, knowing that you'll probably miss the strictly results, so that'll be a bit of a pain. But that actually, by doing so, you might facilitate other people to get what they want and what they need at the cost of your inconvenience. Does that make sense? I said the, the reverse of that to the Sunday night congregation last week. So that one aspect of living out our faith in action. I've gone on for way too long, and I'll be really, really quick with the last bits. Because uh, although I say that, the, the, uh, the key thing is about living in the world. <laughs> That's what the context of the passage is about. And James makes that really clear uh, by talking about people uh, that are vulnerable. He gives two particular uh, categories, forgive me, that's not a great word, of people. And he's saying that, um, he, 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 he says, um, he talks about somebody who's got a, like an unfettered tongue. 
That's a hint of something he'll come back to in a couple of weeks' time. But in other words, he's saying, don't be like the people that talk a good game, but when it comes to actually doing something, never back it up. And he says, particularly have a care for widows and for orphans. Those people have always been at the forefront of the church's mission. Why? Because it was uh, widows and orphans who would most easily become destitute in a society that had no welfare system. So in first century Palestine, if uh, you were a lady and you were married and your husband died, you relied upon the nearest male relative to take you in and look after you. And there was a kind of moral obligation to do that, but there was not a legal obligation. So sometimes people would say, no, I'm not doing that. Or they may not have another male relative. And so therefore, if you were in that situation, you were destitute. You were, you were, you were stuck. There was no pension scheme. Property was not passed on to women. And so you'd be literally, no, not literally, you would be economically stuffed. Same with children who had no parents. If relatives weren't willing to care for them, where would such children end up? Sadly, it was at the local rubbish dump. Just cast aside. And so the church sees this It's heard the ethical message of Jesus and it thinks, well, we need to put what we've seen and heard in Jesus, acts of compassion and mercy, into radical action. And so the church became a place where those that were forgotten by the rest of society and those that were destitute and the most economically disadvantaged were welcomed and reached and made to feel at home. So the poorest and the most vulnerable people in society were embraced by the church. I wonder what the equivalent then of widows and orphans are for us today. Who are the vulnerable people that you are aware of? And it might be for all sorts of reasons that you are not the person to practically do the actual acting might be that there's somebody with more expertise or it's not particularly safe or sensible for you practically to go and uh, uh, with your own hands do something. But it may well be that God is challenging you to do something. It might be to pray, it might be to campaign, it might be to donate some money to a ministry. Who are the most vulnerable people that you come into contact with in your work, in your neighborhood? in your family. Remember, this is a a, a message that's primarily for how we live 24-7. Where is God saying to us, hearing is great, but hearing alone is not enough. It's time to get stuck in. There was a church this year we're recognizing, I'm coming into land now, We're recognizing that putting our faith into action is an authentic part of our discipleship. If we want to be a healthy church, we will grow in our discipleship and uh, in um, the knowledge and love of God and of his word and understanding that. We'll we'll grow in our love for one another through fellowship and uh, welcome the stranger. We'll grow in our prayer life, but we'll also grow in actually... Uh, living the radical gospel of Jesus Christ and making a difference wherever God has placed us. That will mean different things for different people. But where is it today that God is saying to you, hearing is not enough. It's time to roll up your sleeves and get stuck in. Be not hearers of the word, but do something about it says the new testament may god give us grace each one of us grace and wisdom to know where we can get stuck in and where we can do something about it in the variety of places that he has placed us and has set us amen amen let's be still for a moment band if you want to take your positions
Maybe you'd stand with me if you're able. Not going to do anything crazy. Uh, but it may be that just as a sign of response, you may want to just close your eyes where you are, maybe open your hands as a sign of willingness and submission to the Lord. And we're just simply going to pray, come Holy Spirit, stir the hearts of your faithful people. Speak to us, prompt us. Grant us the humility to hear your word louder than the voice of culture. Give us the discernment to know where you may send us and the willingness to go. to do something and to make a difference in the world and in the places where you have placed us. Change lives through your people and through your church we pray. For Jesus' sake. Amen. God of justice, Savior to all, came to rescue the weak and the poor, chose to serve and not be served. God of justice, Savior to all, Came to rescue the weak and the poor, chose to serve and not be served. Jesus, you have called us, freely we've received, now freely we will give, we must go. Live to feed the hungry, stand beside the broken. We must go, stepping forward. Keep us from just singing, move us into action. We must go to act justly every day. Loving mercy in every way, walking humbly before you, God. You have shown us what you require. Freely we receive now, freely we will give. We must go. Live to feed the hungry, stand beside the broken. We must go, stepping forward. Keep us from just singing, move us into action. We must go, we must go. Live to feed the hungry, stand beside the broken. We must go, stepping forward, keep us from just singing, move us into action. We must go, fill us up and send us out, fill us up and send us out, fill us up and send us out, Lord. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out, Lord. Fill 
us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out, Lord. We must go. Live to feed the hungry. Stand beside the broken. We must go. Stepping forward. Keep us from just singing. Move us into action. go, live to feed the hungry, stand beside the broken, we must go, stepping forward, keep us from just singing, move us into action, we must go. So fill us up and send us out, Lord, in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and to your glory. And the blessing of God, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit, be upon you and around you, amongst you, on those you love and those you ought to love, this day and every day. Amen.